I've always wondered why is it that there's certain demographic groups that vote so much the same? There is no bigger group on that than African Americans. To talk to me about that, Derek Williams from Tell Me the Name of the Group, because I remember you from a different group. The new group is the American Conservatives of Color. New Conservatives of Color. American. American. Conservatives of Color. But not the colored New American Conservatives. <laughs> well, technically we're all colored. With the exception this. of, yeah, you're... Italian is the right color. Just enough of this, just an, You think about it later. I'm smart enough not to go down that yeah, road. That's a good idea. Hey, talk to me a little bit about this, because sure. it's always been a, a fascination of mine. When you look at how different demographics vote, mm -hmm. African Americans vote as a block more so than any racial demographic, usually in the high 90 percent for the Democrat. And, and, and the question is how many African Americans come out to vote. In 2008, a lot did comparatively, mm -hmm. but still it's at the same number, 96 and sometimes 98 percent. Go down that list, Asians seem to vote as a block in about 80 mm percent, -hmm. but for Republicans, not for Democrats. And then go down again to the to, to what is the largest growing demographic Latinos. is Latinos. Latinos are about 65 percent to 70 percent vote for Democrats. So what is it? What is it that locks the African American community and many people in politics mm -hmm. either take it for granted or some on the right to say, write it off. You're never gonna you're never gonna make any inroads. You know, so you get from four percent of the vote to five percent of the vote. Don't What's don't the do point? it. Help me understand that. Why, why such a strong lock vote? I think your, your second point, let's handle that, the second point first, because that's the more important, um, that the Republican Party, the conservatives have fundamentally said, what's the point? Why invest the resources? Why invest the energy to get votes that we can't get? Uh, and for 50 years that's been going on, and how's that working out for you? So what our group is doing is we are trying to develop and execute two messages. Message number one to the black and the brown community that says, look, we gotta change the way we do business. Message number two to the Republican conservative community that says, look, we gotta change the way we do business. Now, in terms of the black population, more so than the brown, but the black and the brown population, what we, African Americans, have done is we've basically said to the Democrat party, we're voting for you. We're voting for you. Doesn't matter, nothing matters. Doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you stand for. You could have been busted in a hotel room with crack cocaine and hookers. And as long you as you say, manage you to get... You say that like it's a bad thing. It sounds, it sounds, yeah. it sounds like a true story. Yeah. Yeah. But if you get out and manage to get your name on the ballot, so long as there's a D after your last name, we're voting for you. Now, historically, that wasn't the case. No. After the Civil War, if you were African American, you voted, you voted R. Republican. When did it change and why did it change? Uh, Johnson, uh, great society, entitlement society, all of a sudden the government came along and said, you know what, we will begin putting that chicken in the pot for you. We will begin giving you additional benefits. We will begin making sure that you have a level playing field. And to some degree, some of that's necessary. I'm not saying that's all a bad thing. But what happened was, all of a sudden, you have public housing. You have public assistance in the form of food stamps. It's a lot easier to get Paul's vote if you can rob Peter to pay for it. So you had a generation that said the Democrats are the ones that are giving us the things we need to, sub to survive. Now, four generations later, it seeped so deeply into our culture that whether that's true or not is no longer a matter of question. Now the matter of question is how do we break the cycle? All right, I tell you what, let's, let's, you put it in two different ways. One message to African Americans about, mm -hmm. you know, we're losing our power. I think what you're saying is we're losing our power if we're taken for granted, but also to Republicans and conservatives that you're missing the boat. Uh, let's go there, right. let's go there first. What's the message to, to Republicans? You look at whether it was McCain, you look mm -hmm. at Romney, you know, so you get 4% of, uh, uh, of, of the African American vote. Let me be really cruel about this. Uh -huh. As a percentage of the population, that's not nearly as important as changing the demographic of Latino voters. You, that uh -huh. is the growing demographic. African Americans n are not as, uh, it's not growing at the same speed. No, what, no. But mes message to conservatives, what do, what do they need to know? What here's do they need what to do Here's what you're missing. Um, and you're absolutely right, it hasn't been up until this point. But what you have with the black population, if you have an urban-centric vote, you have an electorate that tends to live in the cities. And where we are in the country now is that if you can win the majority of cities that are home to an NFL franchise, you can win the election. This last election, the popular vote was basically 50-50, basically. 
But Mitt Romney only got 206 of the necessary 270 electoral college votes because they keep winning all the states that nobody lives in. I mean, it, it's great to win Nebraska and Idaho and Wyoming and South Dakota, but nobody lives there. And all of a sudden, you've got Florida with three NFL franchises, New York with three NFL franchises, California with two NFL. You can go right through the list and find them. Minneapolis, Chicago, Denver, Detroit, every place where you have concentrated urban centers, you have three things, black people, brown people, and NFL franchise. So the, so the, the Republican Party has to wake up to the fact that the demographic face of America is changing. The demographic face of the Democrat Party is changing with it. The demographic face of the Republican Party is not. How do you mean that, is not? It is not. You and I were at a meeting Monday morning here in Denver, gatherings of various uh, heads of state, if you will, of the Republican Party, people who are involved in this, that, and the other, activists, 80 of us in that room. Had I not been there with the manager of our, the president of our Denver chapter, that would have been a completely homogenous meeting. Well, that's, there what, was we, no that's, what, there. that's what we shoot for, but you got in anyway. <laughs> but that's yeah. the answer to your right, question. Exactly. So, but, but, so it's a matter of message. Well, hang on a second. So are you saying that conservatives need to have something that they fundamentally disagree with, which is affirmative action, saying, wait a second, we need, no. we need to make sure that different groups are, are here based on skin color. Isn't that an anathema to, to what conservatives believe? Well, you said two different things. You said affirmative action, which I do not believe the Republicans need to introduce. But then you said we need to have people here of different colors, which they do need to have. Because it would become impossible for the Republican Party to win a general election if we don't diversify the Republican base. Plus, you want to represent all of the communities.